On this, let's bring in Ted Williams, former D.C. detective, and Steve Rogers. He's a former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Um, Ted, let me start with you. Um, of course, as I was saying, you know, it, 20 years goes by pretty quickly. America has learned a lot since then, law enforcement, school officials. Listen to this school safety executive director on Sol Pais's intent. Once uh, she got into our area to purchase a gun, uh, no, I say made the pilgrimage. I don't believe she ever made it onto Columbine property. Uh, I don't think that's ever been confirmed, but there was a pilgrimage here. And certainly she purchased a weapon, and those two things combined along with her fascination uh, in, of Columbine, uh, that's pretty clear and convincing evidence that we have a, a, a threat to the school. Ted, this is what we always wish for, right, that the law enforcement can work and make sure that to prevent a tragedy, and that happened today. Absolutely, Dana. You know, it's like you said, 20 years ago, it doesn't look like it's been that long. But law enforcement has learned a lot uh, from 20 years ago. A matter of fact, that was one of the first mass casualties shootings in America, where you had 13 students and one, uh, uh, well, you had 13 students and, and, and a teacher that was killed there. Mm -hmm. uh, so they now know how to react to this situation. They reacted well. I would like to certainly take my hat off to law enforcement officers for the manner in which they acted and the school school system, I think they did the right thing in closing the school system down until this person was uh, caught or killed. And, and it was r remarkable, um, Steve, that you had 500, over 500,000 students that ended up not going to school today because of this. And there's a former principal that weighed in on this. Take a listen to this. As soon as there was an alert to go in lockdown, Columbine High School acted so professionally. And the reason they did this is because of the training being done by the Jeffco Sheriff's Department and John's office. And so it was like clockwork. And I was there through the entire time, and the kids knew exactly what to do. There was support. And so that is mo much more reassuring than what we were where we were 20 years ago. And so I think we know we have things in place now, lessons learned, and the support system is there. Uh, tell me your reactions to that, Steve. Well, I've got to tell you, Dana, uh, also to add to what Ted said, the law enforcement authorities, the school district, all of the citizens involved, uh, I've got to tell you, now becomes a model for the rest of this nation. And I could tell you that there'll be law enforcement authorities going there and speaking with all of those people who are involved in being very proactive in preventing a, what could have been a tragedy. And tell me a little bit more about also this idea. Um, Columbine and the shooting there, as Ted was saying, is one of the, the first uh, sort of mass shooting, and, and especially the ones that are happening in schools. It has this cult-like following. And is there any way that law enforcement uh, can prevent that? Well, this is where the, uh, obviously it will be a forensics analysis on all the electronic equipment, et cetera. But there will be a criminal uh, psychologist uh, involved in this investigation to get into this person's mind. Uh, how do you prevent this? It's very difficult. But this is an obsession, like you say, almost like a cult, but an obsession with Columbine all these years. And the criminal psychologists are going to do a lot of research on her um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, you know, across the social media platform mm -hmm. she has, who she talked to, et cetera. Ted, and that was also true for for the shooter um, for, from Florida, the Parkland students, right? He referred back to Columbine. And I'm wondering what you think about that and how this, uh, 20 years later, uh, people still wanting to get their 15 minutes of fame, inflict harm, grievous harm on innocent people in order to be famous. And that's the scary thing about this. Steve is actually right about this cult-like attitude that's out here in America, unfortunately, as a result of Columbine. As a matter of fact, as you said, in the Parkland shooter, he mentioned Columbine. Uh, it, Dana, you really can't uh, completely immunize the community from these kinds of situations. But I can tell you in the next few days, they're going to be on, uh, on alert there in Columbine because or there are always, unfortunately, copycats out here that you have to worry about in these kinds of situations. And that is an interesting thing, Steve, in the break we were, we were talking about this or before the show started, about the copycat 
nature of this, and that can happen even year, all these years later. It sure could. This is why it's so important. I know it may be a cliche now. When you see something, say something. When you hear something, say something. When your instinct is telling you there's someone who you have interacted with that's speaking crazy, uh, you're going to have to let someone know. And that is so critically important. And they might find out through this investigation that, well, she may have talked to some people about this. So it's important for people to step up and to make that call. Well, and based on the reporting, Ted, it does seem like her family uh, did alert authorities. Oh, absolutely. Um, her social media site was scrubbed and there was a great deal uh, of information there that's showing that she had this infatuation with Columbine. And then when she went from Miami to the Colorado area, purchased this short off shotgun and the ammunition, uh, that, as the uh, one of the individuals said, was a dangerous concoction that put them on a high state of alert that something could happen and something uh, uh, tragedy here clearly was averted under the circumstances. Ted, can I ask you about that purchase of the sawed-off shotgun? Like, you know, she comes across state lines. She's right, like, does that sound like it was on the up and up? Well, it, it is unfortunately on the up and ups. I don't think that this was an illegal purchase. Uh, the, the sad commentary is this was an 18-year-old kid with mental problems, I believe. And here it was, she could probably uh, go in and purchase a, a shotgun legally and probably couldn't even purchase a beer. Uh, there's something wrong, and I think we need to really look again at mm. mental illnesses in our society when it comes to these purchases of guns. Yeah, let me give you the final word, Steve. Well, what's important is that what we see here, what could have been a terrible tragedy, was prevented by good police work, coordination with the school districts, and God bless those people. And they have America And the family. Now. And the family. The the fam right. Yes, very difficult, right? But the family yeah. made the call. So you know what? Today mm. we all have a nice, happy Easter. Oh, thank yeah. God. Well, all right. Um, Ted Williams and, of course, Steve, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate My it. Pleasure. All right. So as bad as it, as it is, the damage to Notre Dame.